In this video, I will be comparing the stock AMD cooler with the Cooler Masters Hyper 212 Spectrum V3. This is a budget CPU cooler that is priced around 2500 rupees here in India, which equates to, I guess, around $30 US. So I bought this cooler recently to replace the stock AMD heatsink and I'm very curious to find out how much of a difference in the maximum load temperatures this can produce when I'm comparing it to this cooler. So what I will be doing is I will be getting all the base readings with this stock cooler right now and then later in the video I'm going to just get this off and I will be installing this CPU cooler over on this AMD Ryzen 5 3600 CPU and then we are going to have a look at what is exactly the difference in temperature that we get. Before I move any further I just want to clarify that I will be using the fixed fan speed on both of these coolers. I won't be using the stock paste that comes pre-applied with the AMD cooler and also the Cooler Master CPU cooler I will not be using the paste that comes in this box. Instead I will be using the Noctua's NTH1. As of now this AMD cooler is already using the Noctua's NTH1. I was making a video previously and I used that paste. So this cooler is already installed with the NTH1 and I'm going to take the CPU load temperature reading right now and then I'm going to remove this cooler and will be installing this Cooler Masters Hyper 212 Spectrum V3. This is a really good heatsink for its money I guess. I've previously used this in a build and I was really impressed with how well it performed. So we are going to test it on this 3600 CPU right now. But before that it's time for me to take a few temperature readings. So here we are running Cinebench R23 and I will be just running a one minute multi-core test and we also have the HW info monitoring the CPU temperatures. So as you can see it is idling right now there is no load and I will be going for the multi-core test right away. My camera is having a hard time focusing but uh, I guess we are good here. So the test is finally running and I can clearly see the CPU cores warming up. So the core 1 has already hit ATC. Core 2 is at 74. Core 3 is 82, 83, 75, 83. So finally we have the test completed. We got I guess a decent score. This is exactly the score I was getting. I mean I used to get 9300 points on this Ryzen 5 3600 and we have some low temperature numbers too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get these numbers on an Excel sheet and later once I install the Cooler Master Spectrum V3 we are going to take these numbers again and later in the video I'm going to make a conclusion. So finally I installed the cooler. So this is how the Cooler Masters Hyper 212 Spectrum V3 looks like when it's installed and up and running. And if you'll ask me, this looks like a decent cooler. This is looking really good. And especially for the price that I paid for it, this looks like a very decent option. So as I mentioned initially in the video, I will be using the maximum fan speed to get all the temperature readings and right now also this fan is running at its maximum speed. I guess this is running at 1800 rpm but I'm not entirely sure of that. What I will be doing next is I will be moving over to my PC screen and will be running Cinebench R23 and will be getting the maximum CPU load temperatures. So here we are in Windows and I will be running the multi-core test in Cinebench R23 and we also have the SW info running so that we can get some temperature numbers. So this is just going to be a one minute stress test 
and these are the temperatures that we are getting with the Cooler Masters Hyper 212 Spectrum V3. This is looking like a decent CPU cooler. I guess we will be having a difference of about 10 degrees or maybe 12 degrees. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to let this test complete and once this completes we are going to move over to the conclusion. So there we go the test is finally complete and we have a score of 9500 points. This is just 200 points over the previous score that we got using the stock AMD cooler. But nonetheless, there is an improvement which indicates that we might have achieved some higher boost clocks on this CPU. The maximum power draw that we saw was 74 watts, which clearly indicates that we have a little higher boost clock while running this test. Previously, the maximum wattage that we draw was uh, 72 watts and now it is 74. So I'm just estimating that we might have achieved a few megahertz higher in this test. So this looks like we have a decent improvement in the maximum CPU load temperatures. And it's time for me to move on to the conclusion so that we can calculate the exact difference between the stock AMD cooler and the Hyper 212 Spectrum V3. So in comparison, the AMD cooler runs about 16 degrees hotter than the Spectrum V3 which is a big enough difference and I think uh, the Spectrum V3 is well worth it over the AMD stock cooler. This is one of the best CPU air coolers that you can invest into because you're getting a significant drop in temperatures and you're not spending too much money here. This cooler is just $30, around $30 and it is going to give you probably the best bang for buck performance when it comes to the CPU temperatures. So this is it for this video. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel in case you have any questions or queries. Just mention them down in the comment section and I'm going to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching and I'm going to talk to you in the next one.